Welcome to a new Precious Plastic video. In this video series, we'll show you how to set up a Precious Plastic workspace inside a shipping container. So in the first video, we bought a container and cut out some holes in the side. In the previous video, we made the entire interior for the workspace. And in this video, the last one, we're gonna finish it up add some branding and add some last accessories. You can download all the technical drawings and blueprints on preciousplastic.com. If you have a question, feel free to post the topic in our forums. And now we're gonna start with the first step, which is painting. And the first thing we're gonna do is take everything out so we can paint it. Ready? So one of the things before painting a container, which is a lot of work, is also sanding. And um, it's going to take a lot of work, so we invited a lot of people from the internet to help us out. And now it goes super fast. The container is painted white. Um, do note that this is quite uh, labor intense and can be pricey to paint your entire container. Um, but we like to make a workspace that is really nice and where you like to work in. But if it's above your budget, you could also skip it or do it later on in the process while you earn some money. Alright, so we reinstalled everything back in the container, but this time nice and freshly painted. Um, now we're gonna hook up the electricity. We're gonna start in that corner with a cable, then we split it up to the extrusion machine and the shredder. Then another cable to these two machines. And while we're at it, we also add a few lights in the middle. So next up is we're gonna power up the container. Yeah, so the next step is electricity. You can download the schematics of this in our blueprints. And the exciting thing is, once this step is done, everything works. So to make it easy, we installed one plug on the outside, which powers up the entire uh, container. And in order to power it up, you just plug it in the electrical grid, and you're good to go. So now we can put on some lights and run machines. Next, we're gonna install a ventilation to make sure we have fresh air in here. This is something that is often overlooked, but an important element because we want to make sure you're happy and healthy. If you want to read more about safety, we added the document in our download kit. So now let's start making the ventilation. Okay, so I'm not going to show in detail how this thing is made because it's pretty straightforward. It's just a metal frame with some wood inside. Uh, so if you have the drawing which you can download, you can easily build it if you're already this far into the video. Um, or you could use any other type of ventilation system. In the end, it doesn't matter that much. You just need to make sure that it sucks out the fumes. And to do that, we installed one motor here, which takes care of all the air. And on the outside, the air is blown out. 
and we installed this cover to make sure the rain and the water doesn't go in the ventilation. Right, so the next step we're gonna add accessories. And this is a fun thing to do. It makes working in a container more pleasant and fun. And I'll show you eight different things we like to install there. But this is also the part where you can unleash your own creativity and come up with new interesting ways and hacks to work inside of here. So the first thing we installed is a scale to measure the plastic. So people bring it, we can measure how much it is and then we give them something in return. Uh, it's just a normal scale. We added this one on here with a uh, magnet, which is super nice. However, it can also be hard to get or expensive. So you could also just drill a hole and put a bolt in there. So next we install the counter. It's just nice to use uh, when people are bringing stuff in and you giving something back that you have some space for that. And you can also put on some additional things. Next we install the pin board. It's where you can place some small notes, pins, um, folders, or even a clipboard where you write down the amount of plastic you get from a person with the date, so you can keep track of everything that comes in. It's just a good place to store all your information. Next we put a logo on each different type of plastic for each bag. And this way you can really separate it. For instance here we have PET number one, HDPE number two. Um, we put the templates in the download pack. And a good way to put them on there is if you make a triangle, you put it on the back and then with a marker you can just uh, draw around it and later color it. It's a quick and easy way to mark your bags. And above each bag we mounted a metal grid. It's a good way to display your product, so you just tie them around with a little rope. Um, and then you can easily see where the plastic should go. So for instance, um, an old cassette box goes into this bag together with the cups, which is all polystyrene. There you put in flower pots and DVD boxes. So it's a quick visual way for people to separate plastic. On this wall we mounted some hooks made with the extrusion machine. It's where you can put on your jacket or your caps when you work during the day. Uh, and on this wall we mounted a poster. We use our melting temperature poster because it's kind of a nice reference when you work with plastic. However, as you can imagine, you can also put up your own poster. And last but not least, we mounted a little tool rack on the wall with the most essential tools you're going to use when you recycle plastic. The rest of the tools you can store them in the crates, but these are the ones you often grab or need, so it's easy to get them close to your working table. So now we finished the entire inside of the container. Everything is here. Now the last final final step is that we're gonna paint the logo on the outside plus some additional branding. So last stop. All right, so the final stop we're gonna add the branding which is some text on the front, on the door, and the logo on the back side. Now the style of precious plastic is very handwritten, which is made to be copied. So if you're gonna paint it on here, it's gonna look exactly like the original because it's very handmade. So don't worry too much if you're not a good painter, I'm sure it will be okay. There are several ways to put text or logo on the container. You could use stickers or just start painting it. However, my hand is not that steady, so I rented a beamer which projects the logo on the container so I can just paint on top of it so I'm sure it's all in the right proportions and it makes sense. A cheaper alternative is also to use um, a projector where you just put on a black sheet and it projects from there. Um, so yeah, let's get started painting. All right, so now the container is fully ready. Everything is on and in there, ready to recycle plastic. The only thing you might wanna do is to transport it to a place if you haven't built it at the final location yet. And if you want to do that, there are a few things to keep in mind. So first you wanna detach the counter 
because it sticks out a little bit so you need to unscrew it so it is completely flat on this side again second you need to detach this plug uh, so it's also flat on this side and now it's ready to transport on a truck and if you want to ship it overseas on a boat you need to make sure to put back the original stickers that were here that contain all the information about the container all right, so that was the last stop of setting up your own precious plastic workspace. It's ready now. Make sure to send off a picture of your container. We would absolutely love to see it. I mean, you put a lot of effort in this thing. Now we have one final video in this series where we're gonna show you how this thing works step by step from collecting to separating to shredding, just to have a full understanding of how a workspace like this runs. I would say that's also the most fun video to watch. So I will see you there.